<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and today I'm going to be showing you all, if you have a compatible PlayStation 2, how you can create a self-booting backup of your game thanks to free DVD boot. The cool thing is this works on a completely unmodified system, so really, if your system is compatible, as long as you are able to burn a DVD disc, you are good to go at this point. You don't need free McBoot, you don't need a mod chip, you don't need anything else because this is utilizing free DVD boot. In short, once you make your backup, it will act about the same as a Dreamcast. So if you have messed with the Dreamcast before, you might know that if you have a self-booting already patched game, all you need to do is burn it to a CDR, pop it in your Dreamcast, and you're good to go. Granted, as long as your Dreamcast is compatible. And that is going to be the same thing on the PS2. For a bit of a longer explanation here, this is using the recently released free DVD boot exploit. Now, what this allows you to do is if you grab one of the pre-compiled ISO files that's been released with this, you can burn that to a DVD, run it on a completely unmodified PlayStation 2, and it will boot you into you launch Elf, which allows you to launch Homebrew. However, the same payload can be patched and applied to retail games as well, thanks to ESR and thanks to free DVD boot. Now, there are a few applications that are out there that are able to do this for us, and the one we're going to be using is free DVD boot ESR patcher GUI, which should make this pretty simple. So, to get started, first of all, you are going to need your PlayStation 2, and you're going to need to verify what DVD player version this is on. So on the PS2 here, make sure it is up and running, and press the triangle button. If you look right here, look at DVD player and get that version number. Now the letter does not matter, but the version number on my PlayStation 2 is 3.11, so I know for sure that this will work. And this method works right now on every single PS2 Slim console. So you need a system that is compatible with free DVD boot currently. If you do not have a compatible version, that means that you just need to wait for it to get ported over for your DVD player version. So now that we've verified what our version number is, let's go ahead and move over to a PC because we're going to need to download a few things. I'm going to show you how to back up your games as well as how to patch and burn them to work with this. The first application you'll need is free DVD boot ESR patcher GUI. The links for all of these are going to be down below in the description. And for this, you simply come over here and download the 7-zip archive file. Now, as for versions, right now, this is only including the 3.10 and 3.11 DVD player payload. There are, I'm sure, going to be more payloads that will be added to this in the future as they're supported. But right now, these are the only two DVD player versions which are supported on this exact application, which does mean that if you have a PS2 Slim, you're good to go. You can continue with this. If you don't, you're going to have to wait for that support to be added for your PS2. As this is a 7-zip archive file, you might need to download and install 7-zip or any other archive software. Just download and install this on your PC. For burning as well as backing up our games, I would recommend using ImageBurn if you're on Windows. The link for this again will be down below in the description. You can just click download now and install this application. And finally, the last thing on here is if you're going to have any CD-based games. These CD games, they're on CD-ROMs and they're the typical blue-backed PlayStation 2 games as opposed to gold or silver. So for this, we do need to take an extra step and convert them to a DVD-ROM format. And for this, we can use Ultra ISO. So thankfully, even though this is a paid application, you can use it as a free trial for what we're doing here. So for this, again, link will be in the description. You can download the free trial and install it on your PC. All right, so on our desktop, we have Image Burn installed, Ultra ISO installed, and Free DVD Boot Patcher downloaded, well, the ESR patcher. So for this, we can open up Image Burn and make sure you have your DVD drive with your game that you want to back up already put in there. I'm going to show you all the backup process first. Once you have this all set up, you can click on Create Image File from Disk. And this first is going to be if you're using a DVD. So this is a DVD based game. And what you can do is just do max read speed on here, select where you want to save this to. So you can click on this folder and pick where you want to save it. And once you have everything set up here, you can just click on this button and let it read over to your computer. 
This should just take a few minutes to rip. All right, so I do have the bouncer ripped here in this folder, and that's all done at this point. So the next thing we can do is if you have any CD-based games you'd like to back up, again, pop it into your DVD drive or your CD reader if you're going to be using that, go to Create Image File from Disk, make sure it loads up. As you can see, this is a CD-ROM of Tekken Tag Tournament. Read speed of max is fine. And with this, you're going to want to save it as a bin queue or however else you're gonna do it. Bin queue is fine because we're going to convert it later on. But again, you can just click on where you want to save this to and save it wherever you can find it. Once you have set all that up, you can just again click on this button right here and give it a few minutes to read your disc. All right, so now with both of our games ripped over, our DVD game and our CD game, let's go ahead and get to patching. First, let's cover the DVD game because this is going to be the easier of the two. So for this, you can just right click and extract the patcher wherever you can find it. It should give you a folder as well as a readme.txt. And if you'd like to read through the readme.txt, it's small enough and you know, it's up to you. It works out because it just explains this real easily here. But I'm going to close out of this. And for this, we can go into our patcher GUI folder. We need to open up the fdvdb patcher exe file. And right here is the patcher. So this should be easy enough to use right here. First of all, in ISO, you just click on select and find the ISO file. So my file is right here and I would recommend making a copy of this if you are planning to archive these because technically it is going to make changes to this file, this original file. So you might wanna make a copy of your ISO if you're intending to do this. But either way, you can grab your ISO and then here for payload, you can select whichever payload is available. This does by default come with a 3.10, 3.11 hybrid, meaning it should work on all PlayStation 2 slim models. So you can select that, click on patch, and as you can see, it is patched successfully. And that's all there is to it, that ISO has been patched. Now for our CD-based game, here is the issue with this, and this is just ESR in general. ESR is supposed to make the PlayStation 2 read these games as a DVD video, and it cannot do that on a CD because a CD simply cannot be a DVD. So we need to take the extra step of converting this image file to a DVD-ROM ISO, which we will then patch, which is why we need our CD game and we need Ultra ISO. So grab your game, grab Ultra ISO, and open it up. It is going to tell you here it's not registered and such, and if you want to purchase it, you're more than welcome to, but for this we just need a trial, so you can do continue to try. And right here, just go into File, Open. Find wherever your CD game is. If it's in binq format, you can select the Q sheet, and that is it. So we have this all loaded up right here. So now we need to save this out as a new ISO. For this we can come into File, go to Properties, and we need to change the media type to 4.7, 4.37 GB, change the CD file system to UDF, untick any other options, so it just needs to be UDF like this, and for our ISO 9660 file name format, you wanna do Windows Unix 3.1. Once all that is selected, again, it needs to look like this, so media 4.37 GB, UDF, Windows Unix 3.1, click OK, and you'll know this worked because all of a sudden it's going to say it's a 4.7 gigabyte game. And here it's going to say PS DVD as opposed to PS CD. So now we need to save this. And to save this, you just go to File, Save As, and right here is fine. It's just going to be in a standard ISO format, which is exactly what we need. So find where you want to save it, press Save, and let it do its thing it's done as fast as that. So now we can exit out of this. If we come over to Tekken Tag Tournament, we have the originals right here, as well as our DVD ISO. So now we need to patch this. In order to patch our now converted game, it's going to be the same thing. So go into FDVDB ESR Patcher, grab the patcher and run it. Again, you're going to want to go to ISO, Click on select, find where your ISO file is for your CD-based game. So again, this is the converted ISO. Go ahead, add that, select the payload, which I'm going to use 3.10, 3.11 hybrid. Make sure the payload though is for your specific version, the one you have on your PS2. Now click on patch, and as you can see, it's patched successfully. 
So again, that's all there is to it. If by chance you're running into any issues with saving or reading these files as well, you might have to run this as administrator. And that would be as easy as grabbing the exe, right click, run as administrator, and if it prompts you, say yes. So if you're having issues writing to those actual ISO files, just do this and it should hopefully work. So at this point here, we now need to burn off our backups. So go ahead, fire up image burn, and go into write image file to disk. And make sure you put a blank DVD in here. So I've already popped a blank DVD in that hasn't had anything written to it. And we're going to now click on this button right here to browse for our ISO. Go ahead, find your patched ISO, open it, and it should look a little something like this. So everything looks fine here. It's going to be a DVD video because that's what's expected. And for our write speed, you're going to want to go with the slowest write speed that is available on your burner and disk. That's what I would recommend. So as this is six times or six X, I'm going to select six X. And once you're ready to burn, just click on this button here. Now I know for a fact this works because I've already actually patched and burned a copy of the bouncer, which I will show you here following up, but I'm going to burn off that copy of Tekken Tag Tournament. So for a CD based game, it's going to be the exact same thing. Just go ahead, click on this folder, navigate over to where your CD game is. And again, we do not want to select the CD copy of this. We want the converted DVD ISO and make sure it is patched. So you can double click this. It shows here, this is DVD video. It shows it's created by ultra ISO. Now right here, again, you're just going to want to burn at the slowest speed. At least that is what I recommend. And once you have everything dialed in, you can just click on this button right here and it should start burning this to your blank DVD. Just give this a few minutes. While we're waiting for that to burn, the last link I'd like to touch up on is the ESR game compatibility list. Now this is always being updated, and if you're finding new things, I would recommend contributing to it. But right here, if you're kind of wanting to see if your game works or if it's been tested, not every game has been tested, mind you. But if you just want to check and see if it has been tested, you can come to the link down below in the description for this and find your game. So with the bouncer, for example, I would click on B and this is how I knew it worked. This is the bouncer. It's the exact same copy that I have and it apparently is compatible with ESR. However, something such as Tekken Tag Tournament right here, I'm going to take a little bit of a chance on this because this is the game. It is the PAL version, even though I'm using the NTSCU version, but the PAL version seems to be working. So I have faith that the NTSCU version will work as well. But either way, I would recommend checking this out if you kind of want to do a quick check. And if your game is not on this list, you're probably going to have to do some testing and just see if it's going to work or not. Either way, going back to this, once your disc is finished burning, we can click OK, exit out of here. Now go ahead, grab your freshly burned backup and let's move over to the PS2. All right, so back over at the PS2, let's go ahead and test out our backups. So you can simply pop in your disc, turn on your PS2 and start playing. I'm going to show you the manual process though, just so you can see the details of it. So here we're at our PS2. First, I'm actually going to pop in our original version of Tekken Tag Tournament, just to show you all how it looks. So if I go to the browser, I don't have a memory card plugged in, nothing else and it shows as a blue backed PlayStation 2 disc, which is not what we want. So I'm just going to take out the original, and for this, I'm going to pop in our freshly patched and burned version of Tekken Tag Tournament. Again, this has been converted from a CD to a DVD. It's been patched with ESR in combination with free DVD boot. So right here, it shows up as a DVD video, which is not displayed as a game, but let's go ahead and boot this up, and I'm going to keep this part uncut, just so you can see how it looks. And take a look at that. We were able to boot up the game just fine. So again, this is our CD-based version of Tekken Tag Tournament, working just fine off of DVD media. And this PS2 is not in a modified state at all. So here you go, it was thankfully as easy as that, literally taking the game, patching it, and burning it, and then popping it into the PlayStation 2. Let's do the same thing with the bouncer and make sure that works. So again, back over at the PS2's menu, I'm going to go into the browser. I've popped in the original disc, 
there is no memory card, so this is not in a modified state at all. And it shows up as a gold-backed PlayStation 2 disc, which means it is a DVD. So let's go ahead and remove this and pop in our patched copy of the bouncer. Just popping it in, closing it right here, and let's take a few moments to read it. So just like the previous game, it's going to show up as a DVD video. Now let's go ahead and press the X button and wait for this to load. And here we go, it's booted up successfully. So just like that, it's as easy as that. The only oddity here is going to be, it's going to have those green screens right there as opposed to the PlayStation 2 logo when it pops up, but that's all there is to it. You can now just take your backup and pop it in without needing a hard modded PS2, without needing free hard drive boot, without needing a free McBoot memory card, without needing a Fortuna installed memory card, nothing of the sort. I would still recommend having a memory card on hand simply because you need to save your games, but what I'm saying here is this PS2 is in a completely unmodified state and we were able to just burn off a game and play it as easy as that. So that's about all there is to this. Thanks to free DVD boot, we have something really awesome on our hands. Now I have covered previous tutorials showing how to play games through OPL, using a hard drive, using a USB drive. I've shown how to install free McBoot using free DVD boot. I've shown how to install Fortuna using free DVD boot. So this is just another thing as well. You can now ESR patch your games to self boot thanks to free DVD boot. Anyways, that's about it for this tutorial. This is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. And if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too.